is bipedalism. Walking on two limbs. So that is what called bipedalism. What are some of the factors which causes bipedalism? These are the factors. One, two, three. Those are the three factors which cause uh, bipedalism. Number one, foramen magnum. The position of foramen magnum, it will show whether it is bipedal or quadrupedal. If there are four, walking on four, it's quadrupedal. Oh, yes. And then you're saying that it moves to a more forward position. If you are bipedal, it means that it goes towards um, the forward position. This will help in allowing the spinal cord to enter vertically. You saw from that diagram above that the, the, the spinal cord enters uh, uh, direct into the head. So it makes the person to walk uh, upright. And then pelvigero, we call this one pelvigero. Yes, it is short and wider or broad. So if you look at it, it, it is short and then it is wide. I'm going to explain this one more. Yes, why is it short and wider? It is to support the upper body weight. Guys, you need to know these factors. We love them. We love them. And then you are saying that you know, the spine, this is the spine, this red color. The spine, how about it? Uh, it's more curved. So if it's more curved, it means that uh, it can allow the compression. Uh, look at uh, you, you, when you jump from high a point to a low point, you don't just jump and stand straight. No, what you do is you jump and you try to squat and then you, you, you stand again, just to make it to have that um, compression. So the reason why this one is like this is just to have um, the, uh, the, the absorption of this pressure from up so that now you can stand upright. Yes. So the to absorb the shock or to allow flexibility uh, during movement or to allow support. So all that, you, you just choose one and then you'll be able to get there. So factors that affect, uh, that caused by pedalism, foramen magnum, position of foramen magnum, you have to tell us, uh, pelvic girdle, you have to tell us where is it. And then at the spine, you have to tell us, we said by pedalism is walking on two limbs. So position, that's the position you're talking about. And then short and wider is this part, which must be short and wider. And then this one is, is, is this um, spine you see in this uh, direction. So let's look at um, uh, this difference between bipedalism and the uh, quadrupedalism. Yes. If it, you are walking on two limbs, what will happen to the position of foramen magnum? Foramen magnum is forward. It is forward, it is going this side. From this point to this point, eh? you see the distance is big. While this side, the foramen magnum is backward. Here, you see it is, the this from here to here is very small. So it is behind, eh? it is backward. We don't say behind, we say backward. I repeat, please don't use your own English here. We want these words. That's what we want so that you can score a tick. Remember, we use what you call KO knock out so that the examiner does not have any issue with you when he's giving you a tick thank you number two is um more curved spine more curved spine if you look at it the spine is curved you see it well, i explained it so it's s shape yes just to we say that to, to allow the compression from top yes while this one is um, C shape. So you see that it looks like a C, while well, this one is S shape. So let's curve the spine. Let's curve the spine. Sometimes you can say C shaped spine. You can say more curved spine, or you can say S shaped spine. So you don't need to write two, just write one. Then you get a tick. So they are saying that now these are pelvigeros. You see that this one is short and wider. Always short individuals are bold. You know? Yeah, bold eh? <laughs> and wider. Eh? All is right. Okay, let's continue. Then you are saying that this one is long and narrow, is small here. Yeah. All right, we're saying that short and wide. Well, this one is long and narrow. This is what I'm talking about. This is shortness. Well, this is the wideness. This one, this is the longness. Well, this is the narrowness so that's how you can uh, interpret it if you look at it we will bring just skull without label and then we ask you 
to give us the differences. Just look at them. And which one supports the bipedalism, which one supports the quadrupedalism, and give the reason for your answer. Yes. So, yes, we'll see some questions. So what are some of the advantages of bipedalism? We can bring this in a 20 mark up question. Yes. So you're saying that free hands to pick and they carry. When you are walking, you, now, when you're giving examples, when you're giving answers, you must compare to yourself. If you compare to yourself, then you'll be able to answer such questions. So free hands to pick or carry food, to use tools and then handle weapons. So you, when the hands are free, you can carry food, you can doing multiple tasks, you can be multiple tasks. And then number two, standing upright. Why is it, when you stand upright, what is it for? Yes, it gives us a wide view. You can see someone far. Eh? Uh, that's the problem of being short now. Eh? If you are short, you can't see someone far. Eh? Oh, but uh, the also short people have uh, advantages. Sorry if you are short. I'm not um, I'm trying to say that it's bad. All right, number three is movement. Uh, it brings, it gives us uh, movement. How about movement? It makes it easier eh? for, for, for us to move. And then we use less energy. Imagine when you are walking on four limbs. Uh, the hands, the, the energy you try to use, it is too much. Then another, reduce the body, body is exposure to sunlight. Then another, it, it, it rises the body away from the hot ground. That's what I've also talked about. So if you are, imagine when you are sitting, eh, you, you, you are sleeping, the amount of sun which will uh, be on you will be more than the amount of sun when you are standing. And then if you are uh, on the ground, the amount of heat which will come into you will be more than the amount of heat if you are far from the ground. And then another one, six organs can be exposed. We can see them, the, oh, yeah, yeah. You see that, uh, you can see a lady a little bit far, say, oh, these are the boobs, yeah, these are the kind of boobs I'm looking for. Sex organs can be exposed nicely and then we know that, okay, we will either go for courtship or you don't go for courtship. So being bipedal is a good or is an advantage. Let's try to understand these points. Here are some of the questions. Number one, tabulate the observable difference between scal one and scal two. Scal one, scal two, scal one, scal two. Observable, what do you see? So let's see, what do we see? Do we see for a man magnum? No, I can't see for a man magnum. You don't talk about it. Do I see the bridge? Yes, bridge here are pronounced. Are more pronounced here we have no bridge or less uh bridge here they are more pronounced here they are less pronounced that's number one number two sloping face sloping face here here is flat face you see you can see what you see i see the canine here the canines here are well developed yes well the canines here are less developed so 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 you you, you can see this one is more pregnant us the, 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 the jaws are protruding out, eh? Are protruding out. Well, here, the jaws are not protruding. You know that some people are like this, eh, oh, you mean that you are pregnant as little bit primitive. Primitive means that, yeah, you are still in, in one million years ago. Uh, for us, we are in one million years ahead. Sorry if you are one. All right. Uh -huh. Then you're saying that. So that's, those are some of the differences. But what you see, yes. Then you're saying that, um, number two, give four characteristics of the upper limb that humans share with other primates. Upper limb, only upper limb. Opposable thumbs, yes. Flat nails uh, instead of claws. Yes, you can talk about free rotating arms. Upper limb only. Don't tell me sexual dimorphism. No, 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 no. They are not talking about that. They are talking about upper limb. Guys, make sure that you read the question nicely. So you have almost 66 marks there. Mahala. Ish. Guys, you have to get this mahala thing. They're saying that, mm -hmm. explain how an increase in uh, brain or cranium volume is related to intelligence. We say that increase in the cranium, it means that uh, it will accommodate more brain. If you have more brain cells, I tried to explain this, and this is an indication of intelligence. A, a bigger cranium indicates more brain cells or a big brain, which indicates a, a, a greater intelligence. Humans are bipedal organisms. Uh -huh. Yes, I see that humans are bipedal. They walk on two limbs. What is meant by pedalism? By pedalism, walking on two limbs. Simple. Go. Or walking on two legs. Walking on two legs. 
Yes. Explain how each of the following scale skeleton structure have have um, contributed to bipedalism. Number one, foramen magnum. I told you forward position. To why is it poor? Uh, is to to allow the spine connect uh, direct to the skull. Yes. Mm, pelvic girdle short and wider. What is it for? To to um to provide the surface area for upper weight. It can support the upper weight. Spine spine is S shape. We talked about this. What is it for? S shape. It allows the compression. It it absorbs the compression. Yes. So that it, now, now the organism can stand upright. So you guys, uh, we are going to come back. We are going to come back. We're going to come back with this evidences for using. Now we are going to force it.